I'm Sahil Rahman in Doha. The main story is here on Al Jazeera. What began with a devastating bomb attack a little over 24 hours ago has developed into a new wave of sectarian killings and a political crisis. Shiite militia have attacked mosques in a Sunni area in northwestern Baghdad in the past few hours. At least 30 people are reported dead and several mosques and homes have been set alight. We're also getting reports of clashes involving U.S. troops in Sadr City. Sebastian Walker reports. After the bombings, an endless stream of coffins. This is the funeral cortege for victims of Iraq's deadliest attack since the U.S.-led invasion, passing through the devastated neighborhood of Sadr City. The early morning sunlight showed new visions of Thursday's horrific attacks the charred wreckage of a vehicle, a singed copy of the Quran. And as the procession picked its way through the debris, armed police were on hand by order of the government. The rest of Baghdad is under lockdown. An indefinite curfew has been imposed by Iraq's leaders who fear the bombings could be the spark for all-out sectarian war. Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki made an appeal for calm on national television. It was followed by a show of unity from the leaders of Iraq's three main sectarian groups. But it's the reaction of followers of this man that everyone is afraid of. Thursday's bombings targeted the Baghdad power base of Muqtada al-Sadr. His influence will now be crucial in preventing revenge attacks. At Friday prayer, Sadr called on Sunni leaders to issue an edict against killing Shiites. But as the coffins arrived in the Shiite holy city of Najaf, attacks on Sunni neighborhoods were being reported in Baghdad. And Iraq is once again left teetering on the brink of civil war. Sebastian Walker, Al Jazeera. Two Palestinians, including a 10-year-old boy, have been shot dead near the town of Beth Lehia. Israeli army says it wasn't aware of the incident. Meanwhile, attempts to form a Palestinian unity government appear to be faltering. Hamas claims President Mahmoud Abbas has introduced what it says are unacceptable new conditions, including the release of an Israeli soldier kidnapped in June. Thousands of Palestinians have attended the funeral of the 68-year-old grandmother who carried out a suicide bombing in northern Gaza. Her attack injured two Israeli soldiers. The bomber's family praised her actions but said they had no idea of her plans. When I was about to leave, she asked me to stay. Then she told me to go and see my brother and that she would be back for lunch, that she was going to have a shower, but she didn't return. When I arrived at the house, I was told that she was martyred. The Russian president is denying a deathbed claim he was responsible for poisoning a former KGB spy. At a news conference in Helsinki, Vladimir Putin said there was no evidence to show his government was involved in the death of former spy Alexander Litvinenko. London doctors have discovered signs of radioactivity. British Army experts have defused at least six explosive devices after a former Protestant paramilitary tried to gain entry to the Northern Ireland Assembly. Michael Stone, a loyalist and convicted murderer, had attempted to enter the Stormont building during a key debate which could have paved the way for self-government in Northern Ireland. Voting gets underway in Bahrain on Saturday and there are already warnings against attempts to rig the outcome. Protesters have gathered in the capital, Manama, demanding an investigation into alleged election irregularities. The Shiite opposition has warned Sunni-led authorities if they don't win at least 13 of the 40 seats in Parliament, they will know the vote was rigged. And China and Pakistan have signed a deal that could triple bilateral trade to 15 billion US dollars within five years. The agreement was made during talks between Chinese leader Hu Jintao and his Pakistani counterpart, General Pervez Musharraf, in Islamabad. Well, we're back with news at the top of the hour.